Conservation International and many other groups are working to prevent further losses by acting strategically in the most critical places around the world. CI works in over 40 countries, focusing on applying science to conservation, on building partnerships to achieve conservation on the ground, and on improving human well-being so that both people and nature can thrive. All biodiversity is important and should be conserved. But in a world of limited resources and escalating biodiversity losses, we must act before time runs out. What do we conserve first? Where on our planet can our limited resources have their greatest impact? Answering these questions requires a strategy based on the best available scientific information. First, we must identify those regions that are most important for biodiversity. Regions that hold not only the most species, but also the most species found nowhere else on Earth. These species are referred to as endemic to a country or region. But that is only half the story. Knowing where the most important biodiversity exists does not tell us where and when to act. We must also look at which places are currently under the highest threat. These high biodiversity, high threat regions are where we must act first to stop biodiversity loss. On land, we have identified 34 such areas called biodiversity hotspots. Despite covering less than 3% of the planet, hotspots contain extraordinary numbers of species and extremely high endemism. At least half of the world's plants and about three quarters of all mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians live in the hotspots. Half of those species are found only within the hotspots. These areas also face extremely high threat from human activities. At least 70% of their original habitat has already been lost. Other regions where biodiversity is high but threat is lower are just as important. We have identified five such areas on land called high biodiversity wilderness areas. Like the hotspots, these regions are home to extraordinary numbers of species found nowhere else. However, unlike hotspots, the high biodiversity wilderness areas enjoy a relatively lower level of threat. Less than a third of original habitat has been lost and human populations remain small. This lower level of threat means we can be much more proactive by averting emerging threats to species and sites and by keeping habitats intact and ecosystems functional. To date, biodiversity hotspots and high biodiversity wilderness areas have only been identified for terrestrial ecosystems. While the focus has been on land rather than water, Many coastal and freshwater areas are included within these terrestrial priority regions. We are improving our understanding of threats and biodiversity patterns beneath the waters so that we can identify marine and freshwater hotspots.